An activity you think, uh, that comes from um, a branch of the Theatre View Press called Image Theatre, and it's called the Image of the Word. And so this is how it works. People got into a circle, um, and then I will say you. You all got into a circle. So first of the Image of the Word. So I asked first of all before I, the, the activity began. I asked. I asked people. I proposed the theme of the future, but uh, the group could have proposed something different. Something that we wanted to work on and explore together in this short amount of time. And so um, I proposed the future, and people said okay. People said okay. So, um, so I said, well, think about the future, but think about in your in your mind's eye. What image comes to you in your mind's eye when you think of the future? When people said, well, which future? The future that I, I fear? Is, that's also another exercise. The future your fear? The future your desire? Well, I didn't narrow it down. I said the future. So, I said, okay. So people got into a circle. They faced outside the circle. Faced outwards, and um, they closed their eyes, and they thought about the future. What image came to their mind? So, in their mind's eyes, they had an image of the future. And then I gave them about 10 seconds, and I said, "Okay, when you have a clear image of the future in your mind's eye." Turn around and face the center of the circle. And they did. So when everybody had turned around, they said, okay, keeping your eyes closed, sculpt yourself into this image of the future. Whatever aspect of the future that you want to share with people here in this group today. So that's what they did. And when everybody had sculpted themselves, I said, now, okay, hold your image, and now look, open your eyes and look around the circle. Now, when in the theater of the oppressed, in the language of the theater of the oppressed, when you sculpt yourself into an image and you hold the image, we call that a body mask. Because in this particular game, people are expected to hold that image through a series of steps. Right? So, so once they open their eyes, they got to look around all the different images of the future. So then they observed the similarities among the shapes of the images and they talked about them. Once they talked about those, I said, well, go and pick one. So they each person chose one image that they were attracted to somehow. They don't even have to think about why. They were attracted to like a magnet. So you're in this circle and you're holding your image and you see another image that draws you to it. You go to it. So the next phase is people, by keeping their body masked, they went and they walked, they crossed the room and they walk to that other image that attracted them and completed. In other words, they positioned themselves in relationship to that image. Now, the problem is that some, maybe that image that they were attracted to, they were drawn to, wasn't necessarily drawn to them. So maybe that image moved in the space. So if I have a body mask and I'm drawn to your image, but if you're drawn to another one, I've got to follow you. I've got to follow you through the space. And that's what happened. So everybody did that until there was stillness. <laughs> and when everybody did that, they said, OK, now form families of images, affinity groups. So the group, uh, I asked the group to create three groups. There were 14 people, so three groups. So um, people formed three different groups. Once they formed three different groups, affinity groups, they had a chance. They had a chance to recompose the structure, which was a collective sculpture. That they had. So they adjusted. They got a chance to think about how they wanted to relate to one another 
in terms other than just being drawn to the image, right? Okay, so they did that. So we ended up with three different sculptures. The next step was we focused on each one. And uh, the group, by focusing, I meant observed. There was a still group image, and everybody else went around it, because you go around, you look at the different angles, and they commented on what they saw. They commented on the reality of the image, the concrete reality, the shape of the image, um, the forms, if people were close, if they were far, could they see each other, were they touching each other, were they standing, they were sitting, etc. those aspects. And then I asked people to just free associate how they read the image. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that this is happening, it seems to me that that is happening. So we did that for a few minutes with each image. And, and we went back in order to dynamize each image. So uh, during the observation of the still images, the group received information that they commented on, had commented on. Now, each image is going to be dynamized, going to come alive, and therefore produce, generate more information. And that's what happened. So each group at a time, was dynamized. By dynamized, I mean. You begin with a still image. Then everybody at the same time makes a repetitive movement that's the logical extension of that particular still pose. Mm -hmm. Then you add a repetitive sound. Then a repetitive word and then a repetitive phrase. So this is how it works. You begin with a still image. Being in the still image already generates feelings, emotions, memories. Out of the still image comes a movement, a repetitive movement. Out of the movement, if you're feeling the movement, comes a sound. Repet you repeat that. The repetition of the sounds generates a word. The repeated word generates a phrase. And everybody did this at the same time. Repetitive movement, go. A, a movement, okay. Keep on making it. Yes, good. Repeat it. Make it huge. Yes, more. <laughs> Add a repetitive sound, no word. Ah! Ah! You're making one movement that's the logical extension of this pose, right? You're, so, again, out of the still image comes a repetitive movement, right? Feel the movement because out of the movement is going to come a sound. You want the movement, get into the movement so the movement generates the sound, right? Get into the sound so that the sound generates a word. Get into the word so that the word generates a phrase. So that's the way we're going to do it, okay? From the still image to um, movement with the phrase. Go, movement. Oh. No, just the movement so far, okay? Just the movement. Big movement. Huge. Out of the movement comes a sound, no word. Yeah. <laughs> Once you're in an image, you become a character. 
Uh, and we looked at each character one by one. And uh, once that happened, the observers shared with the actors what they had seen and what they had heard. In other words, the new information they had received from the dialogue. Then the last part was the actors themselves shared with the group what they were expressing. And also their experience of working in a group because they had arrived with their individual body mass. They had used, not used, they had, they had completed another image. They had positioned themselves, you know, through attraction of some type. Their individual body mask, they had, they had completed another image. But then they got a chance to recompose, which is already a collective activity. And then they got a chance to dynamize. And so the process of dynamizing, the process of, of, of adding movement in sound and words, without it going anywhere in the space, produced another experience. And they talked about that as well. So, and so the discussion on the future, what people thought about the future, happened by having a common point of reference. And that common point of reference was also an experience. In other words, you, the expression is full body. You're using your whole body. You're using all your senses to be able to express what you mean by the future. And then you discover as well in the process that um, there are there are ideas, there are feelings, there's memories, there there uh, I say perspectives on the future that you don't necessarily think about if you're only using words and you're sitting around a table or you're just sitting in a The movement also, um, the, the movement releases many, many associations. And not only uh, the individual movement, the, but, but movement and sound with other people, you know, in a collective endeavor of creation of a sculpture. So that's the image of the future. And there was a wonderful discussion afterwards. And we, if we had had more time, we would have continued. In other words, that another part that we didn't do. Usually I should maybe say that because we didn't do it. But, but if we had had a little bit more time, um, then the individual affinity groups, I would have asked them to sit and talk about what they experienced in their small group. And then we would have shared with them. And that's how